Welcome to the Get Fit Guys Quick and Dirty Tips to Get Moving and Shape Up. My name is Brock Armstrong and I am the Get Fit Guy. The annual survey of worldwide fitness trends is now in its 13th year. Although we know that no one can accurately predict the future, this survey can help us fitness nerds keep an eye on what the rest of the world is up to and glean some insight into what is a worthwhile trend and what is a passing fad. Now, over the past 13 years, the editors of the ACSM's Health and Fitness Journal have circulated an electronic survey to thousands of wellness professionals around the world to determine the current year's health and wellness trends. The first survey was conducted back in 2006, and it introduced what was meant to be a systematic way of predicting health and fitness trends. And the survey has been conducted annually since that time, using the same methodology. Now, since this survey is solely about trends, the participants of the survey were asked to make a very important distinction between what they thought was a fad and what was a trend. Now, these are the definitions that were given as a guideline. A trend is a general development or change in a situation or in the way that people are behaving. And a fad is a fashion that has been taken up with great enthusiasm for a brief period. Responses were received from just about every continent and included the countries of United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, China, France, Germany, Japan, India, Italy, Russia, Singapore, Taiwan, and the United States. So, all right, enough with the beating around the bush. Without further delay, here are the top 12 of 20 trends from the Worldwide Survey of Fitness Trends for 2019. Now, you can take a deeper look if you go to the ACSM's Health and Fitness Journal website, and I'll put a link to that over at getfitguy.quickanddirtytips.com, where you can find a transcript of this episode and all the other ones. Now, here we go. Trend number one, wearable technology. Wearable technology includes things like fitness trackers, smartwatches, heart rate monitors, and GPS tracking devices like those made by Misfit, Garmin, and Apple. These devices can track heart rate, calories, sitting time, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And as angry as my Apple Watch makes me from time to time, it is undeniable that these wearables are here to stay. Wearable technologies first appeared as a fitness trend back in 2016, and it was a number one trend in 2016 and 2017 before it dropped down to number three for 2018, but as you can see, it's back on top in 2019. Then trend number two is group training. Group exercise instructors teach, lead, and motivate individuals through intentionally designed and in-person movement classes of five participants or more. And there are many types of classes using various equipment from cardio-based classes and indoor cycling to dance and step classes. If you're a fan of my undercover Get Fit Guy episodes, you will be familiar with a few of these, including Body Pump, Soul Cycle, Pure Bar, Nine Round, and Orange Theory. Now, group exercise training programs have been around for a long time and have appeared as a potential worldwide trend since this survey was originally constructed. However, it was only in 2017 that group exercise training made it into the top 20, appearing at number 6 and then number 2 in last year's survey. And then we move on to trend number 3, high intensity interval training. These exercise programs typically involve short bursts of high-intensity bouts of exercise, followed by a brief rest period. Although there are several commercial examples of HIT, all emphasize higher intensities above 90% of your maximum during the high-intensity segments, followed by periods of rest and recovery. Now, despite the warnings by some fitness professionals of potentially increased injury rates using HIT. This style of exercise is popular all over the world. If you do a search for HIT on the Quick and Dirty Tips website, you will find a ton of info on this topic, going all the way back to 2012. Although it was offered as a possible trend in previous surveys, HIT didn't hit number one until 2014, and then again in 2018. But it has been in the top five since 2014. And on to trend number four. Fitness Programs for Older Adults 
Now this is a trend that emphasizes the specific fitness needs of the current baby boomer generation and older. Aside from their age, what sets this generation apart is that these individuals, in general, have more discretionary money than their younger counterparts, and fitness clubs have figured this out and are capitalizing on this market. This trend is making a strong return after being in the top 10 since 2007, when it was number 2, before dropping to number 11 in 2017. And next is trend number 5, body weight training. And I am so happy to see this one on the list, since I am a believer in sprinkling in what we call movement snacks throughout the day. So this goes right along with the idea of including a combination of variable resistance body weight training and neuromotor movements using multiple planes of movement, since this can be a serious and effective training program. Now, body weight training actually appeared first in this survey in 2013 in position number three, and was number two in 2017 and number four last year. Crazily enough, body weight training did not even appear as an option on the survey before 2013, I guess because it only became popular in gyms around the world over the past few years. And next up is trend number six, hiring a certified fitness professional. There has been a steep rise in the popularity of hiring a certified health and fitness professional over the years. This is likely due to there being more certification programs available in both wider and more focused areas of health and wellness. Employing certified fitness professionals was a new survey item added in 2019. The next trend is number seven, yoga. Where would we be without yoga and its variety of forms? Aside from the studio style, instructional videos, audios, and books are also plentiful, and, as mentioned in the previous trend, so are certifications in the myriad yoga formats. Yoga first appeared in the top 10 of this survey in 2008 and has bounced around in that area ever since. The next one up is trend number 8, and that is personal training. Being a personal trainer myself, I'm pleased to see this in the top 10. It shouldn't be a surprise though, as personal training becomes more accessible online, in health clubs, in your home, on specialized gear, and even in some more progressive workplaces. Now, since this survey was first published in 2006, personal training has been in the top 10. The next one is trend number nine, and that is functional fitness training. This is another fitness trend that is near and dear to my heart. Functional fitness uses strength training and other movements to improve your balance, coordination, strength, and endurance to enhance activities of daily living. This means replicating actual physical activities that someone might do as a function of their daily routine, not just on race day or in a competition. Functional fitness first appeared on this survey in the number four position back in 2007, but has been in and out of the top 10 ever since, so I'm happy to see it back in. And the next one is trend number 10, and that is exercise is medicine. Exercise is medicine, or EIM, is a global health initiative that is focused on encouraging primary care physicians and other health care providers to include physical activity assessment and associated treatment recommendations as part of every patient visit and referring their patients to exercise professionals. In addition, EIM recognizes fitness professionals as part of the health care team in their local communities. You can find out more about this important and fascinating topic at exerciseismedicine.org. EIM was the number 7 trend in 2017 and number 12 for 2018. And we're coming up to the end here with trend number 11, health and wellness coaching. This is a trend to incorporate behavioral science into health promotion and lifestyle medicine programs for individuals. Health and wellness coaching uses goal setting, guidance, and mindset to focus on the client's values, needs, visions, and short and long-term goals using behavior change interventions and strategies. This, incidentally, is exactly what the nutrition diva, Monica Reinagel, and I use in our Way Less Life program to help our clients achieve sustainable fat loss. 
Now, wellness coaching has been in the top 20 since 2010, but this is the closest it has come to breaking into the top 10. And finally, trend number 12 is exercise for weight loss. This trend is why my list is the top 12, not the top 10, because this idea of using exercise for weight loss has been fraught with misuse and misunderstanding for years now. Yes, most sensationalized diet programs incorporate some kind of exercise program into their daily routine. However, this report indicates that in 2019, the combination of diets, diet supplements, lifestyle interventions, and even cooking classes, along with exercise programs, will become more prominent. And I, for one, feel that this is a move in the right direction, away from the exercising to burn calories idea, to a more realistic and holistic view. Okay, what's out for 2019? Well, yeah, before I wrap up, how could I not list some of the trends that have fallen out of fashion for 2019? So, dropping distinctly and notably out of the top 20 from 2018 were... Circuit weight training, sport specific training, core training, oh no, boot camp style training, virtual online training, that's a surprise, worker incentive programs, that's a bummer, children and exercise, that's an extra bummer, low cost and budget gyms, interesting, boutique fitness studios, okay, I can see that, walking, running, and jogging clubs, hmm, Pilates, Wow. Dance-based workouts, so much for Zumba, barbell training, boxing, kickboxing, and mixed martial arts, water workouts, and virtual reality. Hmm. Well, in my opinion, there are some great trends listed here, with my top three being exercises medicine, functional fitness training, and, of course, the potential for us to reset our idea around exercise simply being a way to burn calories. I've said it before, and I will say it again. In my perfect world, calorie counters would be banned from all exercise machines. Instead, I would add number of limbs moved, or variety of planes used, or even better, I would add a level of enjoyment meter. Perhaps in 2019, we can start heading in that direction. Get Fit Guy is written, narrated, and produced by me, Brock Armstrong, with some heavy lifting and editorial support from Beata Santora. Our sprinting social community manager is Morgan Ratner, our endurance advertising manager is Michelle Margulis, and our head coach at Macmillan Podcasts is Kathy Doyle. You can find me at Twitter and Facebook, I'm at Get Fit Guy, and you can also find me at BrockArmstrong.com. Now, what are you waiting for? Get out there and try one of these trends. <laughs>